bring in Bob Bowlesby, Big 12 Commissioner. He joins us here on the Dan Patrick Show. What have the last 24 hours been like for you, Bob? <laughs> um, well, they've certainly been a roller coaster, that's for sure. Um, we uh, got a couple of uh, good wins on Saturday and got an extra team eligible for the bowls, and it um, seemed like a pretty successful day. And then our, our hearts sank yesterday um, as we uh, got the news that neither of our teams got in. And so, you know, I, I uh, would be less than forthright if I didn't um, say that we were disappointed. But on the other hand, I've uh, been in rooms like that. I believe in the process, and I believe in the in the uh, people that are in the room and the integrity they bring to the process. And so I know how hard it was for them. And, and um, you know, we, we just need to look introspectively and see if there's some things that we should be doing different that uh, – could uh, put us in a better position. We, you, we knew early on that somebody was going to get left out of this process, and this year it was us. When you woke up Sunday morning, did you believe one of your two teams was going to get in? I did, um, and that was mostly based upon TCU being third last week. Um, you know, I thought the committee made a statement by putting them ahead of an undefeated Florida State team, and so uh, TCU having... Um, one fifty-five to three, and uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen uh, a quarterback take a knee with four and a half minutes to go in the game. So you know they didn't make any effort to run up the score or do anything that might impress uh, the committee. But um, you know I, I think that that um, they played well. I think the matchup between a sixth-ranked Baylor and a ninth-ranked uh, Kansas State is just the kind of game you want on the last day of the season. And so um, you know it's a uh, uh, it's a disappointment, but uh, um, you know, I just, I just think uh, there's nothing we can do that's going to change that. So we might as well uh, move ahead and and see what we can learn from it. Explain to me why there is no title game in the Big Twelve. Well, the rule um, as it currently stands uh, in the NCAA is that you have to have at least twelve members. You have to have um, you have to play two divisions. And you have to play a round robin in those in those vi- divisions uh, in order to have a playoff game at the end of the year. So, at a practical level, we don't have the prerogative to have a have a game right now. Uh, ourselves in the ACC have have put forward a proposal that would allow us to have uh, a playoff game with some other format, and essentially it would it would deregulate the rules so that conferences could derm- determine their own use of the playoff game or their own determination of their champion. And um, that will likely uh, get acted upon in the next six months here or so. And, I, and it, once the rule changes, I honestly, I don't know if we'll, if we'll have a playoff game or not, because it's, um, uh, it would be a regular season rematch uh, for certain every year. And uh, in some ways, you know, if you had two one once defeated teams and you ask them to play again, uh, it, you know, it's not fair to the team that won and, and uh, probably is an advantage to the team that lost. So, you know, we uh, that's the reason we don't have a game right now. Um, we may have down the road. I, I think probably uh, this will create a public dialogue. I don't know if it'll be a dialogue among our athletic directors and our presidents and CEOs, but um, I imagine there'll be a public dialogue about whether or not we shouldn't just add two more schools so we could have a playoff. But, uh, you know, adding institutions is a much broader discussion than whether you have a football playoff or not but if you did have that championship game even if it was a rematch knowing what you know now about how the college playoff committee operates wouldn't that give you a better chance to have a representative in the playoffs next year uh well i think the answer is it might um you know if we had an undefeated team and uh, we asked them to play a team they'd already beaten and they ended up losing, uh, they might end up being damaged goods. Um, in fact, you've seen that in the in the postseason playoffs with conferences uh, many times in the past where the, the team that was presumed to be the better one gets beat, and then all of a sudden you have you have two teams up there that really are not what you want. But, um, you know, I, th- I think the one thing we did here is that a 13-game portfolio may have a slight advantage over a 12-game portfolio. Um, uh, a body of work, and if that's the case, then you know we have to acknowledge that we're going into the process with a with a disadvantage, and we have to try and find a way to correct that. So um, I, I haven't debriefed with Oliver Luck, our committee member representative, yet, but um, 
you know, that's one of the things I'll ask him is, uh, you know, are we going into the battle with a short stick in our hand by playing 12 games rather than 13 games? And, uh, you know, that was that was something that we hadn't gotten any advisement on previously. He's Bob Bowlesby, Big 12 Commissioner, joining us here at Dan Patrick Show. I think a lot of, a question a lot of people have, Bob, is Baylor won the head-to-head matchup against TCU. Why is Baylor, or why shouldn't they be considered an outright winner? Because that would seem to be a logical tiebreaker. Well, we have a tiebreaker, but uh, the tiebreaker is not used to determine our champion. Um, our coaches in all sports and approved unanimously by our athletic directors, and it's been in place for for several years, uh, have said we want uh, we want co champions when the records are the same. Um, so you know we can't uh, we can't change that in the in the middle of the season just because <clears throat> it doesn't currently uh, meet our needs, and so. We uh, we on occasion will use the tiebreaker to determine our representative. As an example, next year at the Sugar Bowl, uh, the semifinals will be in in two other bowls, and uh, we will have to determine who our representative is to the Sugar Bowl, whether we have a team in the playoff or not. Um, if there is a tie there, we would use head to head to determine who our representative is. But we would still have co champions. Um, that has that has been our rule, and and that is not something that we can change during the course of the season. Um, but that's another question we're going to have to ask: is is did the fact that we had co champions instead of one declared champion did it hurt us? And uh, no one has said whether it did or it didn't. But um, we're we're certainly going to probe that question a little bit. Yeah, it did seem like Jeff Long at least suggested that that might have hurt uh, the the Big 12's chances of getting. Uh, somebody and is that something at the very least you think should change next year that one way or the other whether it's a championship game or not there should be one true champion one outright champion um you know that's not for me to decide that's that's for our athletic directors and our ceos to determine and and so um you know we'll certainly have that conversation we have uh, athletic director meetings um today and tomorrow um, in conjunction with uh, the National Football Foundation uh, dinner in New York, and um, I'm I'm sure it will be a uh, an early topic of discussion. And um, you know th- there uh, are reasons why we have the rule that we have, and um, we we need to look at it in light of modern circumstances. And if we find out that uh, that um, a 13 game portfolio is is advantageous over a 12 game portfolio, then we have to be responsive to that. If we find out that co-champions are um, put us in a, are putting us at a disadvantage, then we need to think about that. And um, so, you know, that's uh, all things being equal, having more student athletes and more coaches and more institutions that um, can say they they shared in a championship that contributes to a positive experience for everybody. And and so, you know, it isn't uh, in and of itself a bad thing. But if it's disadvantaging us in this selection process, then, you know, we need, we need to be responsive to that. If you were a voter on the playoff committee, who would you have voted for the fourth spot? TCU. Um, it, and I, the only reason I say that, I uh, Baylor beat them head-to-head, and, yeah. and they play, you know, whether they would win. Um, uh, I, the only reason I say that is because I thought they were in a better position to – to stay in there. Um, I, having said that, I think that the committee got it right um, in having Baylor five and TCU six. Um, it, it was um, it was the right thing to do. And you know, I I say it probably would have been TCU simply because they were in a better position to be in. And with Ohio State's win, I think it would have been difficult for Baylor to jump over them. Um, I think that you know it, it isn't just a TCU Baylor comparison. It's a it's a Baylor Ohio State. It's a Baylor Florida State. It's a TCU Florida State. Um, you know, it's got a. The, the only reason I say that is not not because of uh, anything between our two schools. I just think that um, they they had a better chance of staying in, and that's why I think we were so surprised. Is that um, the committee made a statement by making them third. Ahead of a, um, ahead of a, uh, an undefeated Florida State, and uh, so you know it seemed like they were better positioned uh, to to have a chance to stay there. Um, you know, obviously, if uh, if we uh, were 
in a perfect situation, I thought Baylor and TCU were both good enough to be in. Good to visit with you, Bob. No, it's a busy day for you. Thanks. I appreciate the time. Yeah, you're welcome, Chris.